Coming up, rolled tongues, notorious challenges, eye-popping abilities, and more. Join us as we have a look at some things that only 1% of the population can do. Tongue Games The tongue is one of the strongest muscles in the body, and without one we'd have a pretty tough time with our daily lives. Talking and eating are obvious issues, but even as you sleep, the tongue is at work, pushing saliva down your throat to keep the machine well oiled. A hard-working and underrated muscle to be sure. However, there are some tongue talents that are very, very few people possess. For example, the ability to lick your nose is actually extremely rare, requiring one of a number of factors. Usually it's just a longer than average organ like that of KISS bassist Gene Simmons. A connective tissue disorder at the base of the tongue may also allow a person to touch their nose, but it's not certain that you'll be able to perform this action either way. In a similar fashion, touching your chin with your tongue is equally as complex and even a little bit more rare. Aside from the far-reaching ability of this muscular mouthpiece, there are feats of flexibility that are unique to a very small percentage of the world as well. While many people can curl their tongue, a much smaller portion of the population can make it wavy, in a similar fashion to that of a clover. The 1% laughs in the face of this rarity and can take it one step further. If you've ever seen a person turn their tongue into a smiley face with dimples at the back and a curl for the lip, this is truly a rare sight. For this minute group of the population, flipping the tongue completely over, turning it into a clover, and sometimes even swallowing the tongue are tricks that are out of the ordinary. Though, to be sure with the last one, kids, don't try it at home. Eating a spoonful of cinnamon. Now it's important to remember that though the abilities on this list are rare, they are not all enviable. As it turns out, approximately 1% of the population can successfully eat a spoonful of cinnamon. And when we say successfully, we mean without immediately retching or having some kind of complication. The concept of the cinnamon challenge became popular in the early 2000s, showcasing videos of people attempting to eat a whole spoon of the spice with no water in under 60 seconds. Now while it may seem harmless, if you aren't one of the 1%, the side effects of this challenge can be absolutely brutal. It's not just hiccuping and sneezing, the incidents have arisen where those who have attempted the challenge have actually vomited, gagged, and even contracted pneumonia from a relatively simple but stupid feat. So being able to do this without incurring any kind of side effects puts you in an elite group of the population but it might not be worth it for you to find out if you qualify. Open-Eyed Sneezing Since the dawn of time, your body has been continuously reacting to the elements and its environment and training itself to adapt. And this calls for some pretty efficient reactions to normal bodily functions. Take sneezing, for example. As hard as you try, it's pretty reasonable to assume that you can't pull off a sneeze with your eyes open. This is true for 90% of the world. And after all, what do you really miss in that one split second of blindness? However, there is a rare portion of the population that's able to keep their eyes wide open during the whole procedure. Now, it may not seem like a superpower, and really it isn't, but some experts believe that the reflex is related to keeping germs that we expel out of our eyes, and that it's a useful reaction as far as they're concerned. If you're one of the rare people who can perform this strange challenge, don't forget that in 1882, there was a documented case of someone's eyes actually shooting out of their head during a sneeze. This phenomenon is known as subluxing. It is rare, but then again, so is sneezing with your eyes open. So be careful when you attempt this feat. Tickling yourself. Now for some people, even the lightest touch can lead them into a fit of giggles and perhaps even violent reaction. Being ticklish can make you squirm, and whether or not you like being tickled, or maybe you even hate it, or maybe even it's one of your fetishes, there's actually very little that you can do to suppress the inborn reaction. Different people have different thresholds regarding their response to the stimulus. However ticklish that you may or may not be, it's also nearly impossible to actually tickle yourself. 
However, there is a rare 1% of the population that's able to bring about the laughter and the movement without the help of a feather or any kind of other device. Being able to tickle yourself is so rare because your body knows that you're about to tickle it and it braces for the light touch so as to stop you from having the giggling effect. Your brain can actually predict your movement and touch perfectly because, well, it's your brain and it controls everything in your body. What your brilliant brain can't do is to perfectly predict another's movement, so they may just be able to catch you unaware. A very small portion of the population has a disconnect between their subconscious with regards to this touch, and it stops them from being able to brace themselves. This means that the soft tickle won't be anticipated, and thus will cause the squirming, laughing motion. It's just one way for a rare portion of the population to get a laugh out of themselves. Gleeking there are some skills that certain animals possess that we wish that we had. Swinging like a monkey or even flying like a bird certainly come to mind. But what about the abilities of the camel? Now, unfortunately, we don't mean the useful skills of storing water or having desert stamina. We're talking about gleeking. Gleeking is where you project saliva in a stream after compressing it with your tongue from your submandibular gland. Only 1% of the population can launch this particular jet of spit at will, and maybe even fewer people think that it's a cool skill. Now, most people will accidentally gleek, like when they yawn or after a particularly tense moment at the dentist. However, they're unable to do it on command. This might not be the superpower that you always dreamed about, but if you can do this, you're in the rare 1%, the elite population of gleekers. Hypermobility In the broad world of party tricks and playground oddities, we've probably all seen the phenomenon of hypermobility, often termed double-jointed. People with this unique trait are able to move their tendons beyond what most of the population can do. This results in such cool things as thumbs being pulled toward the wrist and knees being turned backwards. This is a rare and stunning facet of life that very few people have, but it doesn't actually do or have anything to do with having more joints than the average person. Thanks to extra flexible muscles and tendons, such people are able to wow their friends and shock the unaware masses. But be warned, it's not all as glamorous as it seems. As life goes on, people with this rare condition have been shown to be more prone to joint injuries and pain, as well as a rare connective tissue disorder. So maybe you thought it was worth it at age 7, but having hypermobility isn't all that it's cracked up to be. The toes. Your hands are a magnificent team, and each finger plays its part in activities like typing, doing up buttons, or using chopsticks. The ability to move and wiggle each finger separately is a skill that most of us take for granted, and it's not all that rare. However, being able to move each of your toes individually is an incredibly uncommon skill. And as it turns out, the vast majority of people on the planet don't have that kind of control. The good news is that it's mostly about practice. From a young age, we begin grasping at things and using our hands to perform feats of dexterity, activities like holding pens and utensils. Over the years, our fine motor skills develop strongly in our hands, while our feet are mostly used to just hold us up and walk around. This sort of boring but useful work doesn't exactly tax the toes, and over decades of routine performance, the toes actually forget how to wiggle individually. You can probably move your toes a little bit, especially the big one, but you might not have the same sort of control over your lower digits. However, for people born without hands, the level of dexterity in their toes becomes the focus of their motor cortex, and over years of practice, their feet can actually become useful as their hands. So if you want to be in a rare 1%, it'll take a fair bit of work, but it's not impossible to sub in the toes for a change. The Eye Pop Eyes come in a variety of different shapes and colors, and each person has a unique view of the world. 
That being said, a very small number of people can actually do some pretty extraordinary stuff with those magnificent orbs. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that the orbital bones and other parts of the skull work very well at ensuring that your eyes don't fall out of your head. However, the ability to bulge your eye out of its socket is a rare and wonderful and creepy talent. This is something that's been seen in the Guinness Book of World Records, but it's not just a single person who can perform this disturbing but unique feat. About 1% of the population can actually make their eyeballs protrude from the skull by working their muscles in a strange way. This causes the eyes to bug outward from the face, giving you an even more special view of the world. The ability to pop your eyes out isn't necessarily something you really want to do, as it actually puts your precious eyes not only on display, but also in harm's way. So, if you can't bulge out your eyes, don't worry about it too much. Sucking it in When someone attractive walks by, it's not uncommon to find yourself sucking in your stomach and maybe puffing your chest out. And it doesn't always have to do with you being overweight, it can just be a natural reaction. Most people can bring their tummies in a little bit, but very few people can really pull it all in. A small population can actually suck their stomachs in so far that they can show the interior workings of their torso, showcasing not just the rib cage, but also the abs and the outline of some vital organs. Now as a child, you may have known someone who could pull their bellies in pretty far. While it was rare then, as people age, we tend to fill out a little bit more, so nowadays it's almost impossible to do. However, the 1% of people who can perform this deep, temporary tummy tuck can make the rest of us seem a little bit chubby, or just make themselves look like Skeletor. Sir Adrian Carton de Wiort was a British soldier who just couldn't get enough of war. So he fought in all the wars that he possibly could, including two world wars. Most men who served in the first world war weren't even able to serve in the second due to post-traumatic stress disorder or injuries. And while he was serving, he experienced a lot of things that would have likely sent any 